Hi Aries, how are you? It's me, Lauren B. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. I've gone ahead and I've done your spread this week with the Oracle of Mystical Moments. We haven't used this deck in a while, but it really wanted to be used today. So you're, you're up for it, Aries. As always, your readings are timeless. So whenever you get here is whenever you get here. Go outside your big three, go by the titles, watch readings by the timestamps, uh, watch them according to your houses. If you look outside the box a little bit, you may find more pieces for you, for your puzzle. You got a real interesting story today, Aries. It actually kind of surprised me as I started to die. I've been staring at your cards for a while and I'm 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 going to a place and I need to I need to stay where I am. Um but there's like a lot of multi-dimensionality. There's a lot coming through about your past lives in regards to the process that I think you've been working for quite some time. But by the end of it, I think you end up in like a really cool place and I'm really happy to see that. So, let's pray and then we'll start digging into this. Very good. Father God, thank you. For bringing me and my Aries in for this reading. I ask that you give me wisdom, clarity, and discernment to deliver these messages accurately for Aries' highest of love, light, alignment, and assignment. We praise you. We love you. We thank you always. We give you all the glory and the honor for these messages. To the utmost high, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, Aries. So, <clears throat> the first card you have out is the Elixir of Life. It's this kind of stop and, and smell the roses sort of energy, right? And it's interesting because this rose, it, it almost feels a little bit like a microphone or like a speaker. Like it feels as though maybe you've pulled back a lot recently, Aries. Maybe you've been doing a lot less than normally you would do. And you're just trying to find um, contentment in your circumstances, in your environment. Maybe you've been spending even more time outside with the elements. It feels as though if there was a need or a desire that you had to like get out and like be more active or be more productive. It's almost as though the environment is kind of has been speaking to you and telling you to kind of just like sit, be where you are. You see the sun's coming up, sit, be where you are, spend this time with me, be present, kind of try and bring down the uh, like adrenaline, kind of regulate the nervous system, not always being so like go, go, go. There is something about the energy that is very soothing to you, but it, it's not necessarily your normal per se. You have the stranded card coming out next. And so I think that this is very much of this internal process, right? Um, but on the outside, it might actually look as, as like you might actually be stranded. Like you're not making a lot of progress. You're not making a lot of movement. It's plateaued energy is a little bit how it feels on the outside. It may look as though like you have been plateaued for a while, kind of stuck, like nowhere to go. And that might have been the situation that caused you to kind of move into this contentment, stop and smell the roses, appreciate like where you are, even if it's not entirely like where you want to be. Because I'm wondering if you were trying to like push the ship off of this plateau, but like the bow just wouldn't break for you. And so it's like this was kind of the only option that you had left. But you do have this liberty card coming out next. And I think that there's something about this process of being able to Smell the roses no matter what environment you're in, even if they feel a little out of season. That is very liberating for you to not be quantifying your worth or uh, how successful you feel based on the external circumstances and insta instead focus it more on kind of the internal peace and contentment that you feel. Now, this is where things got interesting for me for your reading when it comes to this Liberty card, because as I'm sitting here, I'm noticing that you have this little cage with a dove, but your hair is extending backwards, right? So your hair is extending backwards here as well. And your hair is an extension of your energy. And so I think that there is something about Aries... <clears throat> And the fact that for a long time, my ears all of a sudden feel like really clogged. Um, maybe maybe that was a message that like, you weren't pulling in. Is that all the times that you were trying to break the bow and move forward, you weren't realizing that even though you thought your energy was trying to push forward into the future, that you still had so much energy that was connected to your past. And that's kind of confirmed for me with all these little dots in your hair. And you see all these little 
stars and a cloud and a little moon. And, and so there's something about Aries, this process that you've been forced to kind of sit down and, and find a sense of liberty and contentment and peace and harmony where you are, even if you feel stuck and plateaued where you are, has actually given you the time that you've needed to make peace with your past. I think part of the reason why there's so much energy unbeknownst to you still attached to your past it's these aspects of your past decisions that you made things people did to you times things didn't go right like whatever it is <clears throat> that you had yet to make peace with those people the way those things turned out even those versions of yourself all of it and so being forced to kind of sit down has given you the opportunity to liberate yourself kind of from the bondage of the past, these things you couldn't let go of, and instead make peace with it, right? And sometimes making peace is kind of just accepting it, a little bit of that you live and you learn kind of energy. Now, you have, my home is my castle coming out next. And this felt very much like your oversoul you see how there's this castle connected to the back of your head. This is this is like a very, um, you know, it's kind of where the throat meets, meets the crown and the third eye. I know that there's like an actual like chakra back here. I don't remember what it's called, um, but I know it's like a very significant one. I'm not the shock. I'm not the chakra girl. So don't ask, don't ask me, ask your neighbor. Um, but I'm noticing that like right in that area, there's all of these like castles and all of these towers built up, which gives me the impression that this is your higher self, or this is more specifically your over soul that is connected to like a greater hierarchy or a greater system, whether that is like the spiritual world as a whole um, all of your lives. There also is some like Akashic Records energy to this as well. So while you're in this process up here, right, of, of acceptance and making peace with the past, even though you're not making um, a lot of strides like into the future yet, there's this aspect of your oversoul that is connected to a, 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 a higher spiritual hierarchy or connected to your Akashic Records. And out of their hand is one single tower here. And you have weaving flowers coming out next. And so I am interpreting this energy, this elixir of life that you're in, being with this flower in your hand, being the same as this weaving of flowers of perhaps, again, you not realizing that your oversoul, this tower almost represents like this life or this phase that you're in right now. You've kind of been stuck in this hot ivory tower. Again, sort of very reminiscent of this stranded card. And what you've been doing is you've been kind of weaving the flowers or the moments or the situations that you have learned to make peace with, that you have learned to appreciate, that you've learned to feel content with just in and as they are. I do notice that there are all of these birds flying around this tower, but your eyes are covered, which again, kind of gives me that message that you might not be realizing some of the signs or the synchronicities or the messages. It's like the dots that want to get kind of connected for you. I don't think they've been connected up until this point because you have been so focused on being present and being content with where you are. But what is really significant for me is if you look, there are all of these lines, there are all of these threads being focused in the direction of what your hands are doing, of what you're weaving. And when I think of threads, I think of timelines, I think of past lives, I think of your Akashic records. And so part of what you have been weaving unbeknownst to you, I was just called you Libra. Interesting. Maybe this has been something that's been going on since Libra season, like for the past two months or so for you. Um, that's a long time to be in a tower. I digress. Um, but perhaps what you've been doing is you have been weaving in and I, I did a channeled message about that, didn't I? Did I do? I think I did like in Libra season about like past lives. And I think I might have. I'll find it and I'll try and link it in the cards for you at the end. Um, but you've been weaving in this knowledge, um, these aspects of you that previously were left in your files. They were left in the past lives. They were left in your records. But these different aspects, these different threads 
of you and your oversoul, unbeknownst to you, have been coming into this tower that you felt a little stranded in, and they've been helping you weave your future, more of your current present reality, because you have the perfect key coming out next. Now, this is really interesting to me. <clears throat> 33 is a master number as well. And so there may have also in this contentment, um, having to kind of be still, be present, that might have been some issues that you struggled with in former lives, like in reincarnations. But also it could be very reminiscent of your past, like the lives you used to live in this one, old phases in your life where that was more of a challenge for you. And so you had to get used to being present, not living in the past and not projecting in the future and being content with what you have and all of these things. My right ear is killing me all of a sudden. Oh, I don't like that at all. Not one bit. Not one bit. Maybe, you know, this is your masculine inside. It's like the stuff that you didn't want to hear. Um, and so you kind of got forced to sit down. <clears throat> this perfect key card feels significant, though. This feels like a, a particular past life or, again, a past reincarnation or a past phase in your current life where you had locked away a bit of your heart. You had locked away like a very important aspect of you. If you think about your heart, you need your heart. If you don't have your heart, the rest of your body won't get the blood, which is a life force energy that it needs to sustain itself. And so there is something that as you've been pulling in these fractals or these aspects of your previous reincarnations, um, of parts of you that kind of got fragmented off in your experiences in this life, this, this one had kind of been left off to the side up until a very certain point. 29 that breaks down to an 11 11s for me talk about alignment until you got into the perfect alignment or you had these lines or um what you had weaved in a perfect line in a perfect alignment because this feels like a finishing touch when i pulled this card i heard finishing touch and there's an aspect of this life that you had lived now one she does have like this little this little like bowler hat and she has a little bit like this page boy haircut and so and this won't apply to all of you but there is something significant about uh, a, a a life that you lived like in the 20s just because of like the way that she she looks and like her her aesthetics like there is something about that like a very significant aspect of you was fractioned off during a lifetime that you had in like 1911 or like in the 1920s like there is something about that but that's not going to be for all of you. So don't overly attach yourself to that if that doesn't resonate for you. If you have to think too much about it, that part isn't for you. But again, this could also be a phase in your life that, that you have lived in the past, like in this current existence that you have. But there's something about everything had to be put in place for this aspect, this very important fragment, this life force energy to be released to you as this finishing touch. Now, as it does, as it is released, you fall into this day and night card. And now you have the sun, which is also a rebirth, a life force energy. If we didn't have the sun, nothing on earth would survive. Just like if you didn't have a heart, your body wouldn't survive. You, you see the symbolism I'm going with here. And so maybe you've been, again, it's like moon and stars and it's kind of cloudy here and not in my house right now, apparently. Um... And so you've spent a lot of time in the moon, in the mystery, not knowing when things were going to change, when dawn was going to break. You spent a lot of time not knowing that maybe you were pulling in all of these aspects from your past life and weaving them into wisdom in your now moment, right? But once this last little piece gets unlocked for you, this finishing touch, you have this life force energy that gets released to you that it feels like maybe you haven't had in a while. And as I looked deeper into this card, I realized that she has all of this threading. <clears throat> it almost looks like these veins or these root systems going through her arms, going through her dress, right? Just like the trees in the back have. And it brought with the sun here, it brought up this idea of photosynthesis. You're photosynthesizing again after a long time of being dormant. And so that brought in this really interesting concept of <clears throat> asexual reproduction, that a lot of plants produce asexually. They photosynthesize through the life force of the sun, right? And they're able to bloom and blossom all on their own without the assistance 
of another. And so <clears throat> there is this idea, Aries, that again, without you really realizing it, being in this stranded tower has actually given you the space, the time, and the presence needed to pull in these aspects or the life force energy of you from other lives or other phases in your life that previously you had put off to the side without realizing it. And they are allowing you to fully photosynthesize into asexual reproduction. You are able to bloom on your own without anything from the outside, like success, even support, like movement, any of that. Again, it's part of that. I still feel abundant. I still feel good. I still feel okay. I still feel content without it. But <clears throat> now that you're able to do that, you move into the art of seduction. 14, that's a five. Now the way you produce or reproduce is changing because you've mastered the art of spiritual, asexual reproduction. And you have this art of seduction. And it's funny because there's a masculine here, right? And spiritual energy is innately very feminine, but the world is masculine. It's very action oriented. It's very structured. It's very um, hierarchical, right? And so there is something about <clears throat> now because you've been able to photosynthesize, to bloom, to pull in these aspects of life force energy from phases in your life that had passed or from past lives in and of themselves, that now, because you've mastered that, you have the ability to go out <clears throat> and come into union, back into union with the world and produce with the world. And I noticed that the one rose he has in his hand is also similar to this one rose that you have in yours, right? Being content with kind of little, and now you have the ability <clears throat> to go out and to make more, to have more movement in your life, followed up by this Queen Bee card, which talks a lot about kind of promotion and being raised up, sort of like the ladder. It talks a lot about multidimensionality as well with all of these bees being really beautiful pollinators, right? really beautiful pollinators and that's an 11 and 29 breaks down to an 11 and so right on top of each other we have 11 11 and we just had the 11 11 portal right and so I think that there may be something significant about that portal energy we just went through <clears throat> maybe you did something in particular maybe there was an, uh, an activating moment in there for you I don't know but there does seem to be something really interesting that You've been able to bridge the gap between you and your multidimensional self. And it's having a really positive impact on your ability to cross pollinate in the world, not just within yourself now, but you had to master it internally before it could be replicated or duplicated outside of you. Because now you have the abracadabra card coming out next, right? And it's like, here you are, like, back in civilization, back out into the world, but sort of as, like, this master alchemist, sort of like this master of strategy as well, kind of being guided by the stars, <clears throat> which is, obviously, it's astrology, but if you look at, like, sea captains, and, and, you know, historically, people allowed themselves to be guided through astronomy, right? Follow the North Star, being able to um, calculate which direction the wind was coming in and let, let them know which um, way the wind was going to blow them. Like, it, it's that kind of thing, right? And it's sort of like... <clears throat> Uh, when plants know an environment isn't hospitable to their growth, so they'll go dormant in order to protect their seeds, right? And so that might be something as well, is that like your oversoul knew like the environment that you've been in in the past couple months wasn't conducive to proper growth. It's like if a plant isn't blooming properly, you don't, you don't blame the plant, you blame the soil, right? And so you went stranded, you went in the tower, you went dormant in order to preserve the integrity of your seeds. And in that, you got to pull in more life force energy from these past incarnations, from these past phases in your life that you were able to make peace with and grow wisdom from. And in that, you've become a master photosynthesizer because you've learned how to blossom all on your own. And now that you know how to do that, you're able to take that multidimensional wisdom, take that sense of presence and peace and contentment, bring it out into the world, which makes you more abundant. It makes you a better producer and it makes you a better participator is the way that it's coming in, 
right? That even though you're back in the world or you're moving back into the world, you have not lost any of that magic at all. Because then you fall into this like a bird, right? Which is another master number. This is something that you have been able to master. And it's something about your truth with this blue bird, blue very much resonating to like the throat chakra. The truth that you are self-sustainable, that you create your own life force, that if things around you, if the environment is hostile or unsupportive, that you still have the ability to blossom, to produce, to sustain yourself. Maybe that was a fear, like a scarcity mindset fear that you've had throughout your life or previous lives. And then you end up in the journey card, which there's two of these in this deck. And this is kind of moving back into a page energy starting new with this little deer which is also very much of empress energy but there's something really kind of pure and sweet it's kind of like back to the beginning and <clears throat> i was playing the shuffle man before you and you had this song live before i die that had come on by mike posner and what was really interesting is the the music video was him talking about how he started this cross-country walk from the atlantic to the pacific ocean and halfway through, he gets bit by the snake. Some of you guys might have heard this on the news a few years ago. He got bit by the snake. He almost died. He was almost paralyzed. They put him in the hospital for months. He had to have surgeries. He had to do rehab. He had to relearn how to walk. But after a few months, he was successful in that. And so he went back to the place where he was originally bit. And then he finished his walk. And so there is something, again, about you've been on this process and you got stalled out and you've done a little bit of this energetic rehab, right? Pulling in these extra life force energies that previously got left behind. And now that you've built up your strength, you've gained a lot of wisdom. Now you're kind of back where you were, but ready to finish your walk. But in a totally new energy. It's a better energy. It's a more evolved energy. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So Aries, this is what I have for you. <clears throat> it's definitely one of those messages that, especially yours lately, have felt so much bigger than me. And, and it's almost uh, uh, hard for me to, to grasp them because they're very kind of profound messages. And sometimes I feel like they uh, extend past my, my capabilities. Um, but I hope that you got what you needed from, from this. I am going to go do an extended reading for you. So if you're interested in that or your monthly reading for November, Vimeo will be the top two links in the description box. I do offer private sessions. If you would like one of those, my booking information is below. Consider joining Patreon. We have all the extendeds, all the monthlies. I host a spiritual development workshop. Everyone's kicking ass. I love you. I appreciate you being here. Be nice to yourself. Be kind to each other. I'll see you next time.